I'd like to wrap up this video series with a review of some of the main concepts that we've seen so far. Generally speaking, cache memory is about maybe 10 times faster than main memory. Cache is made out of static RAM and main memory is made out of dynamic RAM. If we can get the data that the program needs into cache, then when the CPU wants that data, there's a cache hit. The memory the data that we want is in the cache memory. If the data that the CPU needs is not in the cache, then that's a cache miss. And we saw that there are several different reasons. It might be a compulsory miss. The cache might be cold. And if the cache hasn't been warmed up yet, then the working set is not in the cache. So there is a, going to be a miss for sure. If the data in the memory, in the cache, is in a location that conflicts with some other data in the working set, that means you can't get both of those pieces of data into the cache at the same time. And so there's going to be a conflict. And one, if, if one piece of data is in the cache, then the other one won't be. So that's, you'll get a miss, and that's a conflict miss. And it also may be that the, your, ca your cache is just too small to contain the entire working set. So that will cause misses that are called capacity misses. The computer moves data back and forth between main memory and the cache memory in units called blocks. And we looked at examples where the block size was 64 bytes. The cache is made up of a number of lines. Each line in the cache stores one block. In addition, the line stores some more information, such as a tag, to, to indicate which block it is. It may also store a valid bit or, uh, or a dirty bit and perhaps some other information as well. So the line is bigger than the block of, because the line contains a block of data as well as a tag and other information. When we talk about the size of caches, we talk about the amount of block data that's in the cache. The tags and other bits are not included. We talked about associative memories in general, and we saw how we could use an associative memory to build a fully associative cache. Um, that's not uh, ideal, but that was our first step at looking at caches. And then we looked at a different approach, was which was direct mapped cache, where we used uh, some of the bits in the middle of the address to form uh, an index. And then we went into a, a normal uh, addressable memory and found the cache line that way. And then we combined these uh, two techniques, the uh, set associative memory with the direct mapped cache, and uh, created the, the, the kind of cache that we see uh, used in practice today. When there is a write to the cache, uh, what do we do? Well, um, we looked at uh, a, couple of cons a couple of different approaches. If the data is in the cache, then we could write it and update the version that's in the cache and immediately send the write on through to the main memory. This is called write through. Or we could just update the copy of the data that's in the cache and not update the memory just yet. And only later when the block is evicted do we write the block back to memory. And that's the write back strategy. If we perform a write to a block that is not in the cache, in other words, if we have a cache miss during a write operation, we have two approaches, and one is to allocate a new line in the cache memory and read the block in and then update it there. Or we could simply update the main memory and not allocate a cache line at all. And that's the write with no allocate. We talked a little bit about uh, hit rate and miss rate. Whenever we have a hit, that's, that's good, of course, and whenever we have a miss, that's bad. And each access to the cache is either a hit rate, is, is either a cache hit or a cache miss. 
So these two sum to 100%. We talked about the principle of, the principle of locality programs tend to use the same pieces of memory over and over again and so most programs exhibit locality. We talked about different ways they can be uh, exhibiting this principle. We have spatial locality and temporal locality. The idea with uh, spatial locality is that if uh, a particular byte of memory is accessed it's likely that nearby bytes will be accessed in the near future. With temporal locality, the idea is that if one byte of main memory is accessed, there's a high probability that that same byte will be accessed again soon. We talked about the working set. When a program is running uh, in a particular section of its uh, uh, execution, it's going to need some instructions and some data in uh, memory in order to execute. It may not need the entire program uh, instructions. It may not need all of the instructions. It may not need all of the data, but uh, it, there's this concept that o over a short uh, duration, over a short inter interval of uh, the program's execution, um, some things are needed, some bytes are needed, and other bytes are not. And if we can get the working set into cache, then the access to those bytes that we need will be fast. If on the other hand we cannot get the working set into the cache memory, then the program will have to go out to uh, the main memory. So the program will run more slowly because the CPU will ha uh, not be able to get the data out of cache. It will have to uh, go to main memory um, and pay a miss penalty for many of the accesses. So if there's a hit, that's good. But if there's not, if there's a cache miss, then the cache will forward the request to the main memory, which is slower, and so a penalty is paid, a time penalty is paid. We talked about how you can take, uh, how the cache will take the address that's provided from the CPU and it will divide it into pieces, the tag, the index, and the offset. We looked at an, at an example where we had 64-byte blocks, so the offset was 6 bits. Uh, we looked at um, a situation where we had um, 64 different sets, so we had, again, 6 bits uh, for the index, and that left 17 bits. Um, you know, I never mentioned it, but uh, uh, in my example, we used 64 bytes for the block and an offset of 6 bits, and we used 64 sets with an index of 6 bits. Uh, those two are the same, but that was just coincidence. It, it, they're not uh, necessarily going to be the same. Uh, so perhaps it's a bit confusing, but the number of bits for the offset doesn't necessarily have to be the same as the number of bits used for the index and the number of bytes in the block is not necessarily going to be uh, the number of sets. It's just a coincidence they were both 64. The cache line, in addition to containing the block of data and the tag to tell which block that is, will also contain a couple of bits. The valid bit and the dirty bit are two important bits that are in each cache line. When the computer is turned on, when the cache first powers up, uh, we need some way to indicate that the bits that are in it are not valid, they're no good. Um, and we do that with the valid bit. So by clearing the valid bit, we indicate that the cache line is effectively empty and unused. The valid bit is also used when we switch from uh, one task or one thread to another task or another thread. Uh, different uh, processes uh, uh, have different address spaces, so what is in the cache for one process may not be the right stuff. It will, probably will not be the right stuff for some other process. So when the operating system switches from one process to another process, it's also switching from one address space to another address space. And so it will typically um, clear the valid bits for the cache 
which effectively empties the cache out. The dirty bit indicates whether the block in the cache has been modified. And so if we have a write back scheme where we're uh, keeping the modified data in the cache without writing it through to the main memory immediately, then we need to keep track of the fact that the block has been modified. And the dirty bit does this. The dirty bit is set to indicate that the data in the block has been modified in some way or another. And we talked about programs that go through memory and in particular programs that go through arrays. If they go through memory sequentially, they probably will have better cache performance. So we call that a stride one access pattern. So it's going through every byte in order. If it's skipping over bytes, say it reads one byte and then it skips 20 more bytes before it looks, then it has a stride 20. So, um, you know, these programs uh, may incur uh, a greater miss rate. And we also talked about uh, thrashing, which might occur in some pathological programs um, or in some systems where the cache is not large enough or not uh, well designed. And with cache thrashing, you have a very high miss rate. Effectively, every cache um, access is a miss. So uh, the, the system spends all of its time reloading, evicting and reloading cache blocks. So thrashing is not good. What are the benefits of having a system with cache memory? Well, the main benefit is that we keep the working set for a program in the cache memory. The cache memory is faster than the main memory. And how much faster? Well, just as a rule of thumb or sort of a guesstimate, I put down 10 times faster. So caches speed the computer up by keeping the working set in a faster memory. The We'd like to have, it, it's, it's too bad we can't make the entire main memory this fast, but uh, faster memory is more expensive. And uh, the larger memory that is the main memory is going to be slower. One nice thing about cache is that it requires no special effort by the programmers. It is used for any program that runs. Cache is, is always used without any uh, additional effort. And so therefore it's helping all programs. And so that's a nice aspect to it. Another good thing about having a system with cache memory is that when data is transferred from the main memory, it goes to the cache and it is transferred in block sized units. So if our block is 64 bytes, we transfer 64 bytes from the main memory to the cache memory all at once. And since we're transferring so much memory at once, uh, that transfer can be done more efficiently. We, in a computer with cache memory, the main memory basically ha is organized as a group of 64 byte chunks. So effectively the word size of the memory, the main memory, is now 64 bytes. We're kind of used to thinking of the word size of a memory as being one byte. In other words, each, in other words, each byte uh, is separately addressable and, and we can read and write individual bytes. Well, that's slow. Um, it's much faster to read larger chunks all at once because it can be done in parallel. So when we go to main memory to get a block of bytes, we're getting 64 bytes and those 64 bytes may be spread across many, many different RAM chips. So by using many chips in parallel, we're effectively speeding up the bandwidth for the uh, moving data to the computer from the main memory. There are also benefits to understanding how cache works. Um, if you have code that is performance critical, then you want to optimize it somehow. And knowing how cache works is going to allow you to write cache-friendly code. Now, knowing what you've learned in this video series, you can optimize or, or structure your program to be cache-friendly and use the cache well. 
and thereby achieve significant performance improvements. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.